Welcome back, guys, to another episode of the NFL Universe. Yes, we have an official name now. Uh, we discussed it in our text group chat this week, so we officially are the NFL Universe again. Welcome back. I'm here with my co-host, Max. What's up, everybody? And without further ado, we're going to head right into the game this week. No time to waste. First game of the week was, unfortunately, Giants versus Washington. And then, oh, my God. Uh, Washington wins this one 30-29, to moves Washington to 1-1. One one. Giants now fall to 0-2. Oh uh, we got the stats first. That's how we usually do things here. Daniel Jones, 249 yards, one touchdown. Uh, also rushed for a touchdown, had 95 yards on the ground. Saquon Barkley held to another 57-yard game, I think he had like 30-something the previous week, on uh, 13 carries. Uh, we'll get into that in a second. Uh, Sterling Shepard, 94 yards receiving. We had Darius Slayton with 54 yards receiving and a touchdown. Kenny Galladay, pretty abysmal again with 38 yards receiving. Uh, and then defensively, Nothing special to talk about there. The only guy I can really talk about, only person that gives me hope on this defense is Ajulari. I'm still, still trying to get his yep. name down. Aziz Ojulari, yep. And he is now back to back weeks with the sack. And I think that's on par for record. I can't remember, but it, you know, I, he's one of the better rookies in the NFL right now as a result of having back to back weeks with sacks. So it gives me some hope that we have a pass rusher possibly in the future for the Giants. Um, on the Washington side of things, uh, Tyler Honey, Tyler. Heineke, I always stuck with stick with his name too. Um, 336 yards, two touchdowns, one reception. Gibson, 69 yards rushing. McKissick with a rushing touchdown. And then receiving Tari McLaurin doing what he does, 107 yards, one touchdown. Going into this game, uh, pretty much back and forth battle throughout the but you know, the Giants really should have had this one. Giants had multiple, multiple opportunities to win this game. Uh, between the defense could not tackle per usual. Uh ton we had I can't think we had like 15 something. We had some ridiculous amount of penalties. I can't think off the top of my head. Uh, our offensive line can't block our receivers drop balls. I think we had Darius Slayton who had nearly a wide open reception in the end zone. He drops that ball. Uh, it's just so many mistakes. And my issue is with the giants. One of my bigger ones is, you know, our coach, right? Uh, my blank got his name right now. Why am I? Joe John. I can't think. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, Joe judge. He, he emphasizes on being disciplined and, you know, doing the right things on special teams and not getting penalties. And this team is just full of that. You know, doing the simple things right, like being able to tackle. We miss how, I don't know how many tackles. Not getting penalties. We get so many penalties. And then on top of that, we have the lack of talent. We have Jason Garrett, who is a lackluster offensive coordinator. Not horrible, but is not doing anything special for this team. And then going over to Saquon Barkley, he, is just, he does not look like the same player right now. He, he does not have the same ability that he did. I, I think hopefully as the weeks progress, he'll get back to that point. Maybe he, it's really hard to say where he's at exactly in his injury progress because obviously the NFL teams don't want that type of information out just to just anybody. Um, only when you get in the media, which we know is the media is always not 100% true, especially with injury reports. We don't know where a guy's at. Hopefully he gets back to health. It's, it's rough as a Giants fan, can I say. And I'm going over to Washington not to hold you guys for too long. Uh uh, they, they, you know, they're a pretty solid team. Heineke, I think, could step in. This, first of all, this defense is, is really spectacular. It's something special. Uh, Chase Young is, is Chase Young. And he's he's looking like he's going to be that guy in the NFL for quite some time. He's going to be that elite pass rusher that everyone knows his name, if he's not there already. Um, and that defense is pretty solid. You know, offensively, Terry McLaurin's really, really special, really special wide receiver. Made multiple huge plays for them. Uh, just going looking at this from a more general standpoint, I see Washington and Cowboys fighting it out to win the division this year. Giants, hopefully at this point, you're going to fall in the tank season. We can get Spencer Rattler, somebody, some good quarterback. Uh, but I see, I, you know, going to the game this week, we're going to have Washington versus Cowboys. I think it's really going to help determine who's going to take the NFC East this year. Max? You're also forgetting the very important play at the end of the game where the football yeah. team missed the field goal and it was offside. And Dexter Lawrence. That's what I'm saying. The penalties, Dexter Lawrence. They missed the field goals. Dexter, and not only is Dexter Lawrence offside. Look at me. Look at me when I say this. Not only was Dexter Lawrence offside, but he's over the he's over the curse. <laughs> he's over the long snapper. You see the ball. There's no reason to even be in the neutral zone. There's no reason to jump it. You can see the ball. You can see the ball. You're right over the ball. How how are we offsides? It's just the this team. I just can't like so. It's crazy to think that Daniel Jones actually didn't have a bad game. He looked sure. pretty decent, except for one. Horrific overthrow. Yeah. And the one to Slayton, you could say, was a little overthrown, but too. Slayton's got to catch that. But it's just everything else. And, no, and like Nick, you know this. I'm sure Giants fans can speak to this. Getting a new quarterback is not going to save this organization. It's true. And in no 
area is this more apparent than the offensive line? In 2017, mm-hmm. we were talking about this last week. Dave Gettleman says the offensive line sucks. We got to fix it. It's 2021. Where is it? Like, mm-hmm. how do you? That's like the first thing you should fix for your offense. Because at Super Bowl 55, was it 55 that just happened this year? Yeah. I'm blanking on it. Yeah. I believe yeah, it was 55. Showed us that the quarterback's best weapon is the offensive line. Mm-hmm. And for supposedly an offensive line connoisseur that David or that Dave Gettleman at least thinks he is or should be, where where are the results? It's not happening. This organization is just finding ways to lose games in multiple ways. It, and I mean, there's a reason they haven't had a winning record since 2016. The the only team that has not got, I think, I believe the Giants yeah, are the that, only team. That's absolutely correct. I saw a statistic this week. The Giants are the only team since 2017 that have not had a positive record at some point throughout the season. That's horrible. What, what else is there to say? And, and as for Washington, though, I mean, they might have been close, but it's it's a rivalry game. You can expect mm-hmm. it to be pretty close. And I, I, I'm I with you. I definitely think they're going to run the table in the NFC East along with the Cowboys. I, I honestly, I still am holding up to my prediction they're going to win it because yeah. I trust their defense and coaching above the Cowboys. Mm-hmm. But it's going to be close. I think it'll be another one of those. Hopefully it will be down to week 17 yeah. again or week 18, I should say, because for a bad division, you at least want to be a tight race. And that's what happened last year is what we have in this year. Yeah. And man, I, I keep going on and on about it. It's just, oh my God, it's so painful as a Giants fan. <laughs> Moving on from there, we have the Raiders and Steelers. Raiders take this one 26 to 17. Raiders move to 2-0. and Steelers move to 1-1. and Derek Carr, 382 yards, two touchdowns. Uh, Barber with 32 yards rushing. And obviously, we're still without Josh Jacobs. I believe he's returning for week three. I saw a report. Um, uh, I don't, it wasn't that bad of an injury. So it yeah. Be yeah. So I think he's playing for week three. They obviously did not play this past week. Henry Ruggs, another solid game here, 113 yards and a touchdown. Darren Waller held to 65 yards here receiving. Um, and then going over to the Steelers side of things, Roethlisberger, 295 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Najee Harris, 38 yards. Uh, Juju Smith-Schuster rushed for a touchdown. Uh, and then we had Deontay Johnson as their leading receiver with 105 yards, no touchdowns, and Najee Harris at 43 yards rushing and one – I mean, receiving, rather, and one touchdown receiving. Um, going to this game, I got to start with the Raiders. I'm, I think I'm bought into the Raiders at this point. I, I think the Raiders have established themselves as a playoff team at this point simply because look at the people that they beat. Derek Carr is playing the best he's played since 2016. He is having a near MVP caliber season. I don't think he's going to win MVP. He's probably going to fall off a little bit towards later in the season because he's just not that consistent of of a quarterback. Uh, But he's playing out of his mind right now in terms of Derek Carson. He's winning them football games. That Raiders defense is playing out of their minds for what the talent that they have. This Raiders team is legit. I see them as a playoff team. Um, There's no doubt about it. Me and Wax were talking about it, and I, I did it. I went and dropped James Winston. I know I was on the, his hype train. I, I totally take that back one week later, but we'll get into oh, that. I, I told you guys what happened. <laughs> right. I Max told you guys right. last week this would happen. Max was 100% right. Um, but just going off of that, I, I went and picked up Derek Carr. I think Derek Carr is going to be pretty solid moving forward. Um, and I believe in this Raiders team to make the playoffs. Henry Ruggs is, is developing into that player that I thought he would be. I think guys like Henry, Hug, Henry, Ruggs, Henry Ruggs, Jalen Waddell, are, are all somewhat models of Tyree Kill, and I believe they're going to be the status quo for receivers that every team needs if they're going to be an elite team. With that being said, they are so elite because of their speed to get over the top. It pushes back defense, it stretches defense out. You know, their safety's got to play back deeper. You can have guys that are maybe slower, better, better route runners, better receivers over the middle. You know, this it opens up a lot for that offense. And I think players like Henry Ruggs, again, Tyree Kill, are going to provide a lot of, of – versatility to offenses going into the future. I think they're going to be a, a, a staple or standard for NFL offenses. Every team's going to want one of those guys. And that's like it hasn't in the past, right? Speedy, speedy guys are always wanted on an NFL team. I just think that they're going to somewhat become a crutch with how the NFL is develop, developing for an elite squad, um, partially. And then going over to the Steelers type of thing, uh, side of things, rather, uh, they're kind of held back by quarterback play. Ben Roethlisberger is not great. Um, I think the Steelers, we saw the real Steelers this week. Uh, they're probably not going to be a playoff team. They might be if Mike Tomlin can really coach it together. But I think they're held back by Ben Roethlisberger. And I saw a a, a quote, or I, believe it was, I forget who it was, by Stephen A. Smith. Um, and I, I guess before I finish, I'll ask you, do the Steelers go for Cam Newton and sign him? Because honestly. No. no. That's not going to make him any better. I agree. I, I, so Stephen A. Smith brought it upon the point where it was like, oh, it gives them more, more mobility. And honestly, 
I might see Cam Newton as an upgrade over Ben Roethlisberger. I don't know because Ben, ben Roethlisberger, without a doubt, yeah. even at this age, is probably That's still a better. They're, they're not good. A hundred. 100% a better decision maker, but he does give them more mobility in terms of they're going to run a lot of short game from here but on now, out. now it's like he can run yeah. sort of fast, but his, his, he can't throw that well either. It's, it's true, like, yeah. what, are you, what are you really getting out of I, it? I just thought it was an interesting topic to bring up. Um, what do you guys think? Leave it in the comments below. Cam Newton to the, to the Steelers. Do you agree with Stephen A. Smith? I'll laugh if that happens. Because I questioned <laughs> that, and I was like, I was like, I kind of see his point with the mobility thing, but I, I don't know if he's the right fit for the team especially with a team that doesn't need extra drama in the locker room, i.e. Le'Veon Bell, Antonio Brown. Uh, so <laughs> bringing a Cam Newton doesn't seem to really mix in well with that. I don't worry about the drama there, but what are you upgrading? Like, that's true. That's another – It's, it's it, not above everything else, above everything else is talent. I, I don't think Kimberly Newton adds anything. He only somewhat detracts in terms of his, his outlandish comments and things that he brings to the table. In terms of, you know, his interesting character to follow, but his talent really on a level for the Steelers. I'm moving on from there. Najee Harris, I want to talk about a little bit. You know, should they should not have gone for a court running back in the first round, but Najee Harris, I think, it is, is probably one of the better running backs in the NFL moving forward. He, he just has his, the size and his, his strength and his, his agility, I think. Not exactly. He doesn't have top-end speed, but his agility and his size is able to, to power and, and, you know, make himself available in the receiving game with 43 yards of a touchdown. You know, he's special, and I think – He's basically going to be the replacement for Le'Veon Bell. Um, that being said, you know, I think the Steelers, they have good weapons, but their, their offensive line is not where it was and Ben Roethlisberger is not where it was. Because you can look at the Deontay Johnson, solid receiver, Claypool, solid receiver, Juju Smith-Schuster, solid receiver. They have a good receiver core. They have a good running back, Najee Harris. So it really comes down to their offensive line and their quarterback play. If you look at their defense, they're probably a top three defense in the NFL behind well, T.J. Watt. So. This weekend. That's true. Uh, so... You know, I just really think this falls upon their offensive line of the balance for Max. Yeah, I, I definitely think the Steelers showed more of their true colors this week. And I and like and I told you guys in the past few weeks, maybe not the past few weeks, but last um like last two episodes, I said, you know, the Steelers were gonna go in there and beat Buffalo because they weren't expected to at all. Coming back home against a team that nobody respects, they were the Raiders were six point underdogs. This was the perfect game for the Steelers to lose. And sure enough, their offense went back being flat, they couldn't overcome their injuries. And touching on Najee Harris, I mean, great player, obviously. The talent is there. But I was looking at a number of the runs he made on Sunday, mm. and he had no holes to run through. That yeah. the, the line is just not good there. And Roethlisberger, for a lot of the game, was forcing balls into areas where he really had no business throwing. And, yeah, I, I, defi I, I definitely, like I said, this Steelers team is not going to go very far with what they have. Maybe let me – playoffs because i could see them winning a bunch of games they're not supposed to or being close at least mm. yeah like pretty much though everything i thought about them is the same I, I still wouldn't predict them to make the playoffs as far as the raiders go i'm not going to say i'm sold on them yet because we've seen in the past few years they're so inconsistent especially yeah. late in the year this especially last year december was when they really start to fall apart they went and beat the chiefs last year in kansas city in october they nearly lost the jets mm. in december like how does yeah. that happen I mean, Very true. I, I love Derek Carr personally. I, I think he's just extremely underrated. But as far as the team goes, I think the end of the year is their true test because we know what they can be. What are they going to be? Are they going to gain consistency? Because that's that could make the difference between no playoffs and playoffs. Mm -hmm. Very true. And I, I, I didn't expect them definitely to be one of the last undefeated teams in the NFL, to say the least. But at the end of the day, it's consistency. That's always been their problem. But I, I personally do see a difference in them this, this time around. I think they, I think they got a shot at the playoffs. It, it could be like a 10-17. Uh, moving on from there, we have the 49ers and the Eagles. 49ers take this one, 17 to 11. 49ers move to 2-0. and Eagles move to 1-1. One one. Uh, going through the stats real quick, Garoppolo, 189 yards and a touchdown. Uh, Mitchell, 42 yards, rushing on 17 carries. Uh, Hasty with five carries, 38 yards. Um, and then receiver-wise, Debo Samuel with 93 yards on six receptions. And then George Kittle only had 17 yards on four receptions. We'll note that. I want to go back to that in a second. Um, Jalen Hurts, 190 yards, no touchdowns, no interceptions. Uh, Jalen Hurts also had 82 yards rushing and a touchdown. Uh, and the receiving wide, he had Watkins with 117 yards, no touchdowns. And that was the highlight of the receiving, uh, receiving core right there. So going through it real quick, I'll start with the 49ers. Uh, one thing to note is Hasty went down with injury. It's going to be Trey, and Trey Sermon up in the ladder for uh, running back, rather. And I think Trey Sermon's probably going to – not yet. I, I know they're still going to start Mitchell at number one because he had that he had a good week. He had a really good week, week one. 
Um, his form's pretty not as good in the second week. He only had 42 yards on, on 17 rushes. You know, I expect him to slowly go over to Trey Sermon as, as their top running back. So uh, keep an eye on that in terms of fantasy. It's also, if you're a 49ers fan, I think they're going to have that slow switch over. Um, most of after the year, Casey went down with the injury. Mitchell is not performing to where he was at least week one. Uh, there's a lot of hype around Trey Sermon. So um, I would be definitely look out for that. Debo Samuel, I think, is, has kind of established himself as wide receiver one for the 49ers. Not only that, but he's also having a sort of a breakout year so far. Week one and week two has looked very solid. Um, it, you know, is breaking into that elite receiver category this year and, and definitely continue to look for that. Um, and given he is Jimmy Garoppolo throwing it to him and, and not Trey Lance, who will eventually step in, he'll probably be a better quarterback. Um, so that's interesting. It's going to be an interesting combo there as we see the Debo Samuel develop. Uh, and then thirdly, George Kittle, uh, second week in a row now where he's been pretty much a, a, a non-factor in the games. Uh, 49ers have, you know, really, uh, we know the 49ers like to run the ball really heavily. You can see that in carries versus the receptions and look at their their plays uh but usually they'll get george kittle involved and really he really just has been most mostly a blocker this season um and it's been two games now where george kittle has been really limited on numbers if you're a fantasy owner might be concerned about that i don't really know what to do at this point because again they had another running back drop are they going to start passing more because Debo samuel's been successful we know george kittle's a good receiver it's just whether they're going to throw him the ball or not um so maybe they go toward passing a little bit more but um, you know, I'd continue to follow if I was a fantasy owner with George Kittle, just keep looking it over because he, he's not done great so far. And if they're going to continue to run, run this ball this heavy, he's good trade value. Somebody will want him and you probably dump him, you know, now, sooner than later, especially if they're going to run the ball as heavily this entire season, which we know the 49ers love to run the ball. I move into the Eagles side of things. We told you not to get into the Jalen Hurts hype um, and you definitely shouldn't now. Uh, not that he did terrible, but again, he's just not that game breaking of a quarterback at least yet. You know, it's only his second year, so you got to give him time. But not bad, but he's not doing anything too special. You know, 82 yards on the ground, one touchdown. Daniel Jones has that. I think Daniel Jones is less of a running ability than Jalen Hurts does. At the end of the day, your franchise quarterback has got to be able to throw the football and, and really change games through the air. Jalen Hurts can run the ball, but, you know, going going for that, their wide receiver core is, is also with the Eagles, not looking great. Um, defense was looking pretty solid. I give him that. Um but wide receiver core, you know, where where are we? Uh, you know, Smith was 15 yards. You have uh, Gainwell with 18 yards. You have Reagan with five yards. It's just very unsuccessful. And I, this really comes out of, out of the fact that the 49ers have a really solid defense. You know, their defense played out of their minds, especially with the fact that they just lost Verrett, um, you know, at, at, in the secondary position. So, you know, they're doing all right for what they have right now. The 49ers team, they look pretty good. They could be a playoff team if they continue to play the way they are. Um, but I don't know. What do you, what do you think, guys? Before I ramble on, yeah, I think I didn't watch this game very closely, so mm -hmm. I can't speak to it too much. But just looking at the score, like in the, in the scores of their games, week one they got carried on their offense. Mm -hmm. This week was their defense, not a lot of offense. And for George Kittle's struggles, is it now? I assume what you're talking, you probably watched the game. Was it because yeah. you don't think they're targeting him enough, or what? They're not really targeting him a lot. So why running, wouldn't you? Like you, yeah. like your running backs, like yeah. I mean, they have a com they can run by committee because that's because yeah, right yeah. their offensive line is good. Mm -hmm. But why, if your Kittle's in your offense, why are you not targeting him? Like, he should be the centerpiece of that offense because how dominant he is. So I, I think I think if that's what the issue is, then that's a huge mistake by Kyle Shanahan, not utilizing your assets to your advantage. So, mm -hmm. I mean, in fairness, the couple of years, the two years ago when they made the Super Bowl, they were fairly iffy early in the year, and they were sort of inconsistent all regular season. So we'll see how it goes in the playoffs assuming they make it there i mean they are still healthy which is what matters at this point because that's the biggest thing that's the question for them has always been can they stay healthy so i'm still waiting to see more from this team this 49ers team for sure the first two weeks have not showed us enough based especially based off what their previous years have showed us and like i think we were like, I, like you said with the eagles i agree with you know you couldn't get too high on the jalen heights her jalen hurts hype train excuse me there and they played a really bad team in week one, and we had a feeling that they would come back down to earth. So you never know. Hertz could still improve. He could get there. Do I think he will? Not really, but you still got to give him time. But for those of you acting like um, he was going to be a great quarterback this year, let's calm down on the expectations there. Not that many people did, but just, just from the way some people were talking up to week one, there was a little bit of an overreaction. Uh, so moving on from there, we had the Browns and Texans. Not much to talk about this game. Uh, 
Browns went to 31 to 21. Browns moved to one on one. Texas moved to one on one. Texans, um, you know, I'm not even going to go through the stats because I honestly could care less. The Texans are bad. Uh, Brandon Cook, 78 yards and a touchdown. Tyrod Taylor goes down with an injury. Davis Mills moves up as the starting quarterback. Um, and then the Brown side of things, you know, I think there's a little more to talk about here. Baker Mayfield, 213 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Nick Chubb, 95 yards rushing, one touchdown rushing. And then you have Kareem Hunt with 51 yards uh, rushing. And then you have Baker Mayfield also with a rushing, rushing touchdown. Uh, Felton is the number one receiver for this week, 51 yards and a touchdown. Uh, Bryant, 49 yards. And then Hooper, 40 yards. Higgins, 27 yards. And Joku, 27 yards. And I'm saying this for a reason. He was Joseph, 14 yards. And then Jarvis Landry with nine yards. That's the name we're trying to get to there. Um, and then defensively, didn't do anything spectacular either. You know, ultimately, you know, Grant Delpit had a sack for them. A little concerned with the Browns here. I think they could have done a lot better against this Texans team. Um, but I'm not worried. They won the game by 10 points. It is what it is. Move on from here. You know, start to build momentum. The Browns should be a top three team in the NFL this year. And I think if they're going to be that, they got to do better than they did against the, Tech the Texans because a team like the Chiefs would absolutely crush the Texans, right, in comparison, most likely. So that's where I'm really basing it off of. So I think Browns have momentum to build it on. And then with the Texans, uh, Davis Mills is now the starting quarterback. And I saw this thing on TikTok, which I guess I'll ask Max, Max as well as the audience, you guys the comments down below. Uh, it's this little theory that happens that every single time Tyrod Taylor goes to a team that leaves, they find their franchise quarterback right after. So you have the, you have the Bills with Josh Allen. You have the, the Chargers with Justin Herbert. Um, we'll see, I, there's one more team on there that I can't think of right now. The Browns with Baker. The Browns with Baker. There you go. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so, you know, is Davis Mills the next franchise quarterback for the Houston Texans? I 100% doubt it. Because they're the AFC <laughs> South. Yeah. So, um, I, you know, I, I'd probably see them draft and trade Sean Watson and then draft at some point. Probably it's going to happen. Davis Mills is not that special. But this is an interesting thing to, to note. Um, do you guys have any comments about the only, this? The only difference is all the, the other guys you listed, you said Herbert, yeah. Josh Allen, and Baker. They were all top 10 picks in the first round. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Davis Mills was a third rounder. So, mm -hmm. you know what I honestly see that this season for the Texans being like the way it started so far? It reminds me of the Jaguars last year. They come out week one, win in surprising well, yeah. fashion. Not that the Texans were supposed to lose week one necessarily, mm -hmm. but they weren't supposed to blow out the Jags. Mm -hmm. Coming in week two. So, the Jags come in week two last year, play the Titans closer than people would think. This year, the Texans come in and play the Browns closer than people think. Now they're one and one. And then the Jaguars lose the rest of their games. The Texans might have lost a good bit of momentum with Taylor going down. So could they do what the Jags did last year and lose all remaining games on their schedule? And with that being said, before we move on here, uh, with the Texans being competitive in this game and then winning their first game, obviously, what I do, the impact that I do, do think this has is let's put, it's presumably they got one in 15, they continue to lose games like they did against the Browns. Relatively close scores. It, it buys Khalid more time. He'll get an extra year, he'll get an extra two years if he continues to coach somewhat well. You know, they're not really expected to win games, but if you can coach them in to close losses, they're a really good draft pick. We build a team, it buys him more time. That's all I can really say about that type of game. Um, moving on from there, we have the Broncos, Jaguars. Broncos won this one 23 to 13. Broncos are now 2 and 0. Who would have thought? Uh, Jaguars uh, fall to 0 and 2. Uh, Teddy Bridgewater, 328 yards, two touchdowns. We have Williams with 64 yards rushing, and then Gordon with 31 yards rushing. Um, Sutton is their top receiver with 159 yards. Um, and that's all I really have to say there. KJ Hamler held to five yards um, defensively. Uh, Trevor Lawrence did what he did. Kareem Jackson with interception there. Uh, and then Jaguars, we have Trevor Lawrence with two interceptions, total uh, 118 yards, only passing one touchdown as well for Trevor Lawrence. And then rushing-wise, we have Robinson held to 11 carries, 47 yards, receiving 55 yards uh, and a touchdown for Jones. Uh, so just going through this game real quick, I don't think there's much to talk about here as well. Broncos are are really playing well right now, to say the least. Uh, they are on a hot streak. They're the team that they're going to be the team to beat moving forward. They're going to be, I guess, they're like the Raiders right now. The Broncos and the Raiders are really hot. It's hard to say where they're going to end at the end of the season because it doesn't seem like they really have the talent to carry themselves to a championship, uh, AFC championship, NFC championship, even though they're both AFC, but both AFC championships, you know what I mean? So I, I don't know really have the talent to go there, but it seems like they're the, probably the two hottest teams in the NFL right now in terms of don't really exactly have the talent or the coaching, but they're playing well, they're meshing, and they're going to be a team to beat forward. On the Jaguar side of things, they're an absolute mess. Not much to say other than I, I think this Urban Meyer quote that kind of got leaked. I'm not sure if he said it publicly. Or I, I, saw, I saw the quote. I can't say if it leaked, it leaked 
or it was said publicly, but he said, but coaching in the NFL is like playing Alabama every single I week. remember that, yes. And, and that just sounds like a coach who is not confident in his ability to coach. Uh, Urban Meyer has selectively now gone back to, to car, running Carlos Hyde uh, more, which the guy shouldn't even be in the NFL at this point. He you know, is a third string running back for a reason. Um, it seems like James Robinson is slowly getting pushed off this team, especially by Urban Meyer. Why? <laughs> because Urban Meyer, I think he – Urban Meyer feels uncomfortable, so he's going to go for the college guys that he knows. I think that's that's why he's he's going to Carlos Hyde. That's why he's going to go to. That's why Etienne was drafted. So Etienne that was drafted. That's why you know what I mean. So that's why they, they got rid of. Um, how many? Do you know how many touches James Robinson has gotten in the past two games? Well, he got eleven carries this week, and I believe he didn't get many that's more it? last week. Yeah. And it, remember, James Robinson was a top top five in rushing last year in the NFL. Yeah. And he was very productive. You know, 11 carries for 47 yards, not horrible. I forget what running back is. We just covered. He had 18 yards for 42, uh, 18 carries, rather. I think I think it might have been uh, Mitchell, but like 18 carries for 42 yards. So, you know, that's not horrible. <laughs> it's a little under four yards of carry, but, you know, for, if you get four yards of carry, that's the first down every single drive. It's not horrible. It's, it's been worse. You got a first down within three plays. And yeah. You carry it four times. Wait, you know, it's not, it's not horrible. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not horrible. So sorry, it's a little bit over four yards of carry. I can't do math. Forty-four divided by eleven would be four. So, you know, I, they're moving off of James Robinson. Urban Meyer does not seem like he's very confident. I just don't see Urban Meyer lasting more than this. He continues to play like this. He continues to have that level of confidence. And we know this organization's a mess. We know the players aren't confident. Urban Meyer. If Urban Meyer himself doesn't sound confident, then why are they going to keep? Him? He's going to be out the door before you know it. But like, uh, the question I have is, is he even going to make it halfway through the year at this rate? Yeah, it's like, it just what what can we even say like, every week with this team? It's always a new Urban Meyer rumor coming out, not playing James Robinson as much as they or ref, rather refusing to give him more touches is an excuse after what he did last year. Yeah. And just going back to the ETN pick, it's what I've been saying about them. It's nothing but with this organization, it seems like it's nothing but name chasing. Mm-hmm. Like especially in the offense, getting um a guy like Etienne and not replacing anyone on the offensive line. Look at what Trevor Lawrence is doing. He's going to get killed. You're going to give him the Joe Burrow treatment at this rate. Mm-hmm. What are you doing? How do you – I don't get it. This, this team is so backwards right now. And it's honestly hard to comment really on anything on the field except for the really bad decision-making, which we touched on, obviously. Man, I, I just don't get it at all. And I can tell you right now, just from a fan watching on TV, I can tell you right now, if it was my team, I'd be giving James Robinson at least 20 touches a game. 100%, I agree with you. Uh, who knows where his career is going to end up at this point? I don't think he's going to last too much longer. 20, maybe, at least, maybe right now, at least, take some of the pressure off Trevor. Yeah, 100%. Uh, moving on from there, we have the Panthers and the Saints. Panthers destroyed the Saints 27-6. to 6. Uh, Jameis Winston, 111 yards and two picks. <laughs> so, Max is right. I told uh, 19 you. yards rushing for James Winston, the touchdown. Uh, Alvin Kamara, five yards rushing. Alvin Kamara, five yards rushing. Alvin Kamara, 25 yards receiving. Alvin Kamara, 25 yards receiving. Humphrey was their best receiver at 27 yards. Um, all I can say is this. Do I think the Saints week one was a fluke? Yes. However, to defend the Saints, uh, the Saints were not at – not able to return home because the city's been kind of destroyed uh, due to flooding and they're not even at their home stadium right now. So it's, they're kind of a mess. And that's kind of the only excuse that's buying them out of this week. But I, I've lost faith in the saints at this point, getting bad, beat this bad by the Panthers. Uh, with that being said, Sam Darnold, 305 yards, two touchdowns, one interception. Uh, it was the Jets. Jets were the problem. <laughs> Me and Max are kind yeah. of on the same page. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, Christian McCaffrey, 72 yards and a rushing and a touchdown. Also 65 yards receiving for Christian McCaffrey. He's back. Uh, DJ Moore, 79 yards receiving and a touchdown. Um, and then overall, this Panthers defense has been spectacular through two games. They are the Statistically, they are the number one defense in the NFL right now. And uh, Burris, great interception by him. Uh, Burns getting he's been he's been fantastic. Uh, is, what is, is this the second year I believe or third year I can't remember. No, this is third. This third year, yes. Burns has, has really developed into quite the pass rusher. He had a sack, uh, sack and a half for Riddick. Riddick, um, you know, half a sack for Fox. 
this 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 defense can they get pressures. It's also a, a interception for Horn as well. This defense they get pressures. They've been they've been fantastic in the first two games. Sam Darnold is looking great. Uh, he's looking like the quarterback he should have been with the Jets, but it's obvious when we get to the Jets that it's, it is the Jets. Jets are probably the problem. Sam Darnold, who's to say whether he's going to be this elite quarterback that he should have been out, coming out of college, but he's definitely going to sure be better looking forward, uh, you know, projecting what we've seen so far. He's going to be a lot better than he was in the Jets. Max? Yeah, no, def- the one thing I will say about Sam Darnold is there, wa- there was one throw he made. I don't know if it was interceptor or not, but it was like he definitely forced it and he was being tackled. And that's one of those things we'll just have to clean up. And I and I think he will. I feel like we can sort of forgive him because it's almost like this is, I, wouldn't, I mean, I won't compare this to a rookie year, but this is really the first year he's getting an opportunity on a good team and getting the opportunity to develop. So hopefully he'll learn that. And I think he will. But I would say the one thing I will say to defend the Saints that the Panthers defense is that good top to bottom talent wise they're absolutely stacked and it's not surprising that they're one of the top units in the NFL and I definitely and I believe I said in the in the season preview I definitely see this team flying under the radar because you know offensively they I really do think that they're about a quarterback away from being a pretty good team and if Sam Darnold can only progress from here they may have that watch out for this Panthers team especially in a 17 playoff they could make it and i i love a little bit i mean I, i've told i've said it already i thought this would happen because james swinson as great as he played week one he was never going to play like that 16 times a year mm-hmm. not just because of his turnovers but because that offense has little talent outside of camara who's not even playing that well mm-hmm. so yeah that's really all i have to say there I love Matt Rule's coaching. I think he's, he's a fantastic coach. I was really excited for him to get behind this Panthers team, and it, it seems like it's, it's panning out so far. Um, I didn't expect the Panthers to rebuild and really get going this, this early on, but it may be there. Uh, moving on, we had the Rams and the Colts. Rams win at 27-24. to Rams with the 2-0. and Colts are now 0-2. Uh, Matt Stafford, 278 yards, two touchdowns, one interception. Henderson with 53 yards and a touchdown. Uh, Sonny Michelle got a little bit more active this game, but uh, it seems like they're running a little bit more of my committee, but I expect that's mostly because Henderson has been sort of injured, um, not really out, but just a nagging injuries. But it's you know they traded for Michelle, so seeing him play makes sense. Uh, Forty six rushing yards for him. Cooper Cup, unfortunately for my my sorry butt, because I drafted Rob Woods over him, had one hundred sixty three yards and two touchdowns. Compared to Robert Woods, sixty four uh, receiving yards and no touchdowns. Um, defensively, you know, Aaron Donald, no sacks, but he gets pressures. And uh, yeah, Jalen Ramsey with a nice interception there. Uh, moving on to the Colts side of things. Once we see him with 247 yards, touchdown reception, goes down with an injury. Uh, we, we see Easton step up for 25 yards. Uh, Taylor, we have for 51 yards rushing. And then Michael Pittman Jr., 123 yards, zero touchdowns. Um, Zach Pascal with 38 yards and a touchdown. And then Doyle with 64 yards. You know, ultimately, this Colts team is really. <laughs> They're kind of in the same position they were last year. They are, they are a quarterback away from being competitive. Uh, obviously, Carson Wentz has been okay when he's been in, but he's now been injured twice for this Colts team since they signed him, and it's two games into his first season with them. So, a big concern there. Easton's okay. I don't think he's a start, starting uh, court caliber quarterback in the NFL. Um, Taylor's pretty solid, but can't, isn't getting much going there. Uh, Michael Pittman Jr., as I've said, I think for the past last year and this year, I love Michael Pittman Jr. I think he's a great guy. He has a YouTube channel. He's really involved in social media. I really love him as a person, but I think he's also a really talented wide receiver. He's like 6'4", 220, fast, his hands, can route run, great with spec catch. Uh, you know, I, I think Michael Pittman Jr. is the future of the wide receiver position for the Colts for its entire being. Um, that being said, Zach Pascal is now, I think he's had three touchdowns in two weeks. Uh, not heavy on the, on the receiving market in terms of how many receptions he's getting. He only had five, th- only 38 yards. But he's been productive in the in the red zone. You know, he's now had three touchdowns in, in two games. So waiver wire pickup question mark. You know, keep an eye on him. If he continues to produce, he might be that guy that goes under the radar that's going to get you touchdowns every week. On the Rams side of things, a little bit of slow of a week for them, but they came out with the win. Um, this Colts team is not horrible. You got to remember that. Matt Stafford, who's solid, Henderson, sort of injured. Cooper Cup's been going off. I believe he's he's wide receiver number one in the NFL right now. Um, in terms of fantasy, he's at the highest at most points out of PPR and any wide receiver. Um, and then defensively, they're going to do what they do. Uh, Rams move to two and zero. Oh. Max, what are your comments? This might seem as a little bit of a hot take, but I'm going to say the Colts' coaching 
has been known to be good and keep him in games. And I feel like this is a great example because the Rams are one of the best teams in the league. But it's also kind of lost them games. And this goes back to last year in the playoff game against the Bills. I remember one of the plays they had was fourth and goal. They went for it, didn't get it. And they lost this game by three points. That could have tied the game, but they didn't take the points there. And in this game, fourth, they had two, um, well, they had one fourth and goal. They went for it. And Leonard Floyd completely sniffed it out he, and got Wentz. It wasn't even like he beat one of the tackles. He just, they just got out schemed and Carson Wentz didn't have a chance. And then one of the plays they got, another play they had down in the goal line where Wentz went out in motion when he got the ball, it seemed like he got, and then he threw a shovel pass and it got intercepted. I couldn't even tell who was two. The nearest guy in the area was Jack Doyle, but it felt like if it, if it just been incomplete, it could have been called for grounding because there were no eligible receivers in the area. I couldn't tell if that was on Wentz, if that was on um, the coaching or what, but like, I just look at that play and I'm like, what is that? It's again, another scenario where the Colts are just leaving points on the board and the, in games that they could have won. And I definitely think Wentz going down kills some momentum because I don't believe in Jacob Eason right now, especially in it, especially because of one, the first play he had, the one thing you don't do in the NFL, especially as a rookie quarterback, is you throw to Jalen Ramsey. Guess what he did in this first play? Threw it downfield, Jalen Ramsey, it gets picked off. Total rookie mistake here. He may improve, but it's going to take a lot longer than people, people are going to want. I definitely don't think they're going to win anything this year. Because, I mean, it's, it's one play, I know, but if you can make that much of an error on your first NFL throw, like I don't see how any guy can have confidence to throw it on that side of the field. And maybe I'm overreacting there a little bit, but I, even despite that the, this game was close, I definitely think the Colts are in trouble, especially if Wentz can't stay healthy because he's sprained both his ankles, I believe. So who even knows if he's good to go this Sunday? And going off of that, I was just reading through some reports. Carson Wentz was not at practice today, uh, which is it's Thursday now. Yeah. I doubt he's going to play this week, to be honest. Uh, we'll probably save it for next week. But again, that's two injuries now for Carson Wentz, and he's been, in, he's been on the Colts for two games. It's not a good ratio, I would say, the very least. Um, speaking of injuries, we'll get to another one right here. Uh, next game we have are the Bills and the Dolphins. Bills absolutely demolished the Dolphins, 35-0. to zero. Both teams are one and one Not much to talk about here other than Josh Allen, 179 yards, two touchdowns, one interception. Not fantastic, not what you want to see it with, for Josh Allen. You want to see, I, I love Josh Allen. I want to see him at that MVP caliber talent. I think he is, but he's just not playing up to his full potential right now. I think he's going to get there, but he's not there yet. Uh, Singletary, 82 yards rushing, one touchdown. Um, receiving wise, Diggs with 60 yards and a touchdown. Sanders, 48 yards. Uh, I think that Bill's offense is, is a lot to work on moving forward. Uh, Tua goes down with another injury. Uh, yet again, see where he, where he ends up here. But uh, Brissett steps in, 169 yards and an interception. Uh, Grant to the very least. Uh, Gaskin, 25 yards, rushing on five carries, and then Brown with five carries and 21 yards. Ahmed also had six carries for 17 yards. So Dolphins are running by committee, uh, especially Gaskin's not getting a lot of touches in the red zone. If you have him on your fantasy team, trade him now. <laughs> Waddle has 48 yards, and then Parker has 42 yards. Kaseki has 41 yards. No touchdowns. Obviously, there was no points. Uh, this Dolphins team, I think at this point, they're regretting picking Tua over Justin Herbert. And that, you know, during the draft, I was totally on board with Tua over Herbert. But I got to admit, I was wrong. Um, I'm sure the Dolphins are saying, damn, we messed up. We should have got Herbert. Um, as much as I love Tua and I want to see him do well, I think he has the potential to do well. He just has not lived up to it. He's gotten injured twice now. He was injured all in and out last year. You could say it was COVID. He didn't really do well. But Justin Herbert did phenomenal. And he had the same offseason as, as Tua. So, you know, uh, Tua is just not – developing into that player that you want to see him become on the bill side of things. I think this is more indicative of the bills team that we expect. I think offensively, they still have some growing to do this season. They're not really where they were last season. And I guess teams are figuring them out a little bit more, but uh, still a lot better performance for the bills this week. They moved to one and one. I still expect to be a, a fairly solid playoff team. Uh, probably finish the season with 11, 12 wins. If I had to guess, but uh, 35 to zero bills, you can't be upset with that score. Uh, but it's again, the dolphins are just not playing well right now. So, uh, it's, it's really a no-brainer that the Bills won this game. Yeah, going back to what you said about the Bills' offense, it's what I've been saying for, like, the past week now. Like, you can't win with just Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs. Yes, Singletary ha has had two pretty good games, but you can't really rely on him to be your running back one. And like I said, just give him more help because 
a, a true receiver too could make a big difference for this team, even a tight end, because they don't have any really elite tight end. No one that even comes close to scaring you or even close to a lead. Like, why did I even throw that adjective out there? And for the Dolphins, I mean, you hate to say it's nothing but questions for two at this point. I mean, last year we could have excused it because he was a rookie and you, you don't know. I mean, he could still come out and be better, but if, if we're going to talk about the injury issue again, then if you're a Dolphins fan, you were scared last year. What are you thinking now? Like, I mean, yeah, he has, it's way, it's way too early to call him a bust as some people are doing. It's totally mm-hmm. ridiculous at this point, but if, if the injury issues persist, then, then it's going to look really bad for them. And I really, I really hope the Dolphins don't have to cave and, and to the Deshaun Watson rumors. I mean, as of right now, I don't see that happening because I don't see the guy getting traded until he's even cleared the play. Mm-hmm. But after this game, there's nothing but questions with this Dolphins team. 100%. Uh, so moving on from there, we have uh, Patriots versus the Jets. Patriots won this one 25 to 6, was not competitive at all. Um, Mac Jones, 106, 186 yards passing with touchdowns, no interceptions. Harris, 62 yards rushing, one touchdown. Uh, receiving wise, White was their number one receiver, 45 yards. They had Henry with 42 yards on two receptions. Um, nothing spectacular to the Patriots here. More defensively, that's, that's really, really, they had a fantastic game. Uh, so, going over the Jets side of things, we had Zach Wilson, no touchdowns, four interceptions, 210 yards. Um, Carter was their leading rusher with 59 yards. And then Barrios was their leading receiver with 73 yards. So, just not much to say about this game other than we'll go to the Patriots real quick. Definitely want to see more out of the receiving core. Uh, specifically Hunter Henry, you know, I, I'm not really seeing a, a lot of receiving balance here. Um, and then Mac Jones, he's solid, you know, he's, he's done well so far. No complaints about him. Um, so I have to say, though, some of my friends had this little debate. They said, who, out of the three quarterbacks, in order, who would you pick, right? You have Daniel Jones, Zach Wilson, and Mac Jones. If I had to pick, I'd go Zach Wilson over Mac Jones over Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones is last. <laughs> my friend Matt, if you listen to this, like, you know, I said this to you. Even though Zach Wilson had four interceptions this week, there's this one video that came out that really highlighted the Jets and went viral. Uh, you have the, the, the Jets offense being ridiculous. You got one, you have one free blitzer screaming. You have, I think it's I'm Matt looking Matt. at the video right now. Yeah. I was going to bring that up. Screaming at Zach Wilson. And, and all right, Brian, if you're editing this, make sure to add this in. We'll do a clip on on on, on Instagram. Yeah, definitely, add the clip over this. You got you got the, the line. You got the linebacker screaming at it's Zach Wilson. Help. You got the linebacker screaming at Zach Wilson. You got basically two offensive linemen blocking each other on the right side. Then you got I think the tight end and the right tackle. I, I forget who it was staring at each other. Like, what are you doing on the right side? On the left side, you got you got a guy getting beat, and then you look downfield at the receivers, and they're they're on man on man coverage. They're sticky as could be. There's not there's a single ounce of room. One, and you got two guys that can come over. So it's essentially one on three. And, and then, and then out of all that, right? You got the linebacker screaming at Zach Wilson. He throws a pretty solid pass to receiver, considering the situation. Pass. He hits him in the hands. I forget what receiver it was. I think it was. I think it might have been Moore. I forget who it was. I believe I it was Elijah Moore. It was Elijah Moore. It bounces off his hands into into whoever I forget picked it off, and it's just like, what more could you add to Zach Wilson? And as we explained before with the Giants. Quarterback's not going to solve your situation. Zach Wilson's going to fall into the same pit of despair that Sam Darnold did if you don't fix this offensive line and fix the rest of the franchise. I think Zach Wilson has potential to be a superstar in this league. I love everything he's put on the table so far. But you can't expect him to be successful if an offensive line can't block for anything, if nobody gets open. And you can't really blame Zach Wilson. It's like you couldn't blame Tua. Or I forget who, who played the Patriots last week. It was another uh, rookie quarterback. Uh, Played the Patriots last week. Who, who played the Patriots last week? I can't forget. It was the Dolphins. The Dolphins, yeah. It was, it was, so, oh, okay, it was two, I guess. Yeah, it was two. Two has struggled against the Patriots. Uh, young quarterbacks struggle against the Patriots. Their, their defense is a lot of hitting coverages. They do they do things really well. It's a Bill Belichick defense. So I'm not even mad if it was Zach Wilson's fault because Zach Wilson's a rookie quarterback. You know, it, it's the Patriots. However, it's worse than that because this franchise is an absolute mess. Zach Wilson cannot win or do well in these circumstances. Max. Yeah, I really don't even know what to add. You hit it like right on point. It's like what I think that that play literally sums up the Jets. Like, how wh- what more can you expect Zach Wilson to do? Like, yeah, he's going to make his rookie mistakes, but how is he ever going to grow out of those growing pains yeah. if you don't give him adequate tools? One hundred percent. I have nothing more to add. <laughs> nothing more to say there. Uh, so moving on from there, we have the Bears and the Bengals. 
Bears take this one 20 to 17. This is one of the more contested games last week that uh, Max shows the Bears. I told the Bengals. I was wrong. Um, so going to the score, 2017, Bengals 101, Bears 101. Joe Burrow, uh, two touchdowns, three interceptions, 207 yards. Joe Burrow's been pretty solid so far, but he definitely needs to continue to grow. Three interceptions against the Bears is not fantastic. Mixon was their only rusher for 69 yards, and then receiving gets Tyler Boyd to 73 yards. Higgins with 60 and a touchdown. You had Jeremy R. Chase with 54 and a touchdown. Um, ultimately, the Bengals, I don't have much to say about them, so I'm just going to say this. Offensive line needs to be addressed. That's probably their biggest biggest need. And then defensively, they need, they need to fill in spots. But that offensive line, this offense is not going to get going until they fix that offensive line. I think it's pretty clear. Um, I don't think they have – Bengals really have high expectations this season anyway. Uh, so going to the Bears side of things, uh, I believe Dalton went down with an injury. Am I correct in saying that? Um, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I think yeah, Fields – Fields starts next week. Fields is starting next week. Um, so 60 yards for fields and interception touchdown for Danny Dalton, 56 yards. Montgomery, pretty solid. We got a him 61 yards, uh, Mooney with 66 yards, their top receiver. Uh, not a great game out of either, either team. Rokon Smith had a pick, which was a pretty nice pick. Um, you had Blackson with the pick as well as Johnson with the pick. So, you know, I don't, I don't know much about this game. Bears were just a better team. They're, 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 they're both not great teams. And I think the, the Bears just came out on top because they are the better team. Yeah, this this game really showed how bad both teams are because Burrow th- threw three picks on three straight plays, not drives, plays. And the Bears, up 23, nearly choked and let him back in at the end of the game. It's, I, I didn't watch this game that closely, but it just shows what we thought about those two teams and their franchise and the state of their franchises. It seems like it, they're two of those teams who will always persist in a bad state. 100%. So moving on from there, we have the Buccaneers Falcons. Uh, Buccaneers blow out the Falcons, and I say blow out with the asterisk next to it. Uh, 48 to 25, Buccaneers 2 and 0, Falcons 0 and 2. Uh, Falcons were really competitive in this game up to late. Uh, it's kind of a weird game. Matt Ryan, 300 yards, two touchdowns, three interceptions. Um, Davis was 60, went 38 yards uh, rushing, and then Kyle Pitts was their leading receiver at 73 yards, and then Calvin Ridley, 63 yards and a touchdown. Cornwell Patterson, 58 yards and a touchdown. Buccaneers. Uh, Brady's out of fire, to say the least. 276 yards with five touchdowns, no interceptions. Leonard Fournette has really taken over the starting role as running at running back for the Buccaneers with 11 carries, 52 yards. Uh, Jones with 27 yards on six carries. Receiving wise, uh, Fournette's been getting involved too, and Allen knows because he's on my fan, uh, fantasy team. Four receptions for 24 yards. Mike Evans is a leading receiver for 75 yards, two touchdowns. Godwin with 62 yards and a touchdown, and Gronkowski with 39 yards and two touchdowns. Um, Going through it real quick, I'll start with the Falcons side of things. Not a horrible game out of them. They blew it late, but they were competitive for a long time. You get you put it in perspective, right? Um, I, I can't forget. I think they were down. It was either tied going into the fourth quarter, but uh, it was really close. Buccaneers put up 20 unanswered points in the fourth quarter and, and made this game look like a blowout. That's what it came down to. That in ultimate lines to Buccaneers being a better team, and you have Tom Brady, et cetera, et cetera. Um, Buccaneers are doing well. Uh, notably, Gronkowski has really came back to form. He lost a little bit of weight in the offseason, got into a better shape. He's having one of the better seasons that he's ever had. I, mean, I think he had two touchdowns last week, if I remember correctly. So that, that'd be four touchdowns total for Gronkowski through two games, which is insane for a tight end. He's looking like the old Gronk. Um, it's really because he put in the work. So I'm excited. If you're a Gronk owner, you had him on your bench, you got another starting tight end, you, you know, might want to look at this point to trade your starting tight end you know, filing Gronk and then maybe get some trade value out of him. Uh, and then on the talk side of thing, again, not much to talk about other than they kept it competitive through the first first three quarters, and I'd give them credit for that. Uh, Kyle Pitts looked good. Calvin Ridley's not really playing up to his ability because he's limited by how limited this Falcons offense is, but, you know, you got, you got good talent in Calvin Ridley and Kyle Pitts. It's something to look forward to when you eventually get this franchise rebuilt. They could be competitive against a good team. It's just they lack talent. I, frankly, they lack coaching to really get the job done. Yeah, I mean, pretty much all I have to say about this game is like we knew the Buccaneers would win because they're, they're just that much better. But it seems like every we're just talking about Brady just continues to defy all logic, all expectations. And and I, I this term has probably been used um, in excess, but he seems like he's just aging in reverse. I don't know how it happened. Nine, nine touchdowns in, in two games. That's insane. Unbelievable. Wouldn't be surprised. I think he's on pace to break the touchdown record given – they have an extra game this year, so what he if he might do it. MVP in, in his at forty four. That'd be nuts. But with that being said, uh, moving on from there, Vikings and Cardinals. I think this is where we have a real MVP here. As I said last week, I'm sticking to it this week. Had another fantastic game. Vikings Cardinals. Cardinals win it thirty four to thirty three. 
in the best fashion, but they won the game. Uh, Cardinals 2-0, Vikings 0-2. Ultimately, Vikings are not living up to where they should be. They have too much talent, especially on offense, to lose games. Uh, Vikings struggled to find a kicker because the kicker misses the game-winning field goal. Kirk Cousins played well, 244 yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions. Dalvin Cook played well, 131 yards with rushing. Um, Receiving-wise, not great. Adam Thielen, 39 yards and a touchdown. Justin Jefferson, 65 yards and a touchdown. And Osborne step up for 91 yards and a touchdown. Uh, ultimately, it just comes down to the fact that the Vikings cannot find a kicker and their defense was pretty not great. here. They, they got cooked up by my future MVP pick. I'm second with it. Kyler Murray, uh, 400 yards, three touchdowns, two interceptions. Not great, but Kyler Murray has just been fantastic this season. I think he's taken that step up to the elite quarterback that he, he is going to be. You know, I think he's taking that Josh Allen type jump this year. He's looking fantastic, even though I wasn't happy with the two picks, but 400 yards, three touchdowns. Can't, can't argue those numbers. Uh, Edmonds with 46 yards rushing. Um, and then we only had James Conner with 26 yards rushing. So I think ultimately the rushing game is going to need a little bit more work, but uh, going over the receiving type of th- side of things, 114 yards and a touchdown for more. Um, Kirk is with another solid game here, 65 yards, three reception. DeAndre Hopkins is kind of limited here to four touchdown, uh, four receptions rather, 54 yards and a touchdown. AJ Green also had a touchdown with 44 yards. Um, you know, I love this Cardinals defense. They weren't great this week, but you know, I think that I think this Cardinals team is one of those teams that's going to be it's going to be one of the ones to beat going into the playoffs. I just love how Kyler Murray's playing. I think he's playing out of his mind. Not perfect. He's still, you know, I, I think he has some room to going to do to be. Mahomes or Josh Allen level quarterback, but I think John, I think Harden, uh, rather Kyler Murray is playing on an MVP level this year. I suspect he's going to win MVP when it's all said and done. Max, the thing about the Cardinals is we know, like I said before, we know what they can be. We they started out this way last year, but they just had to keep consistency, right? I mean, I definitely do think Kyler is starting even better than he started last year. Just watching just some of the plays he makes, I don't know how. There was one play he made. It was a fourth down, completely on his back, just and then throws it, but he throws a perfect pass to Christian Kirk. I just don't know how you do that. And that's really it. And I mean, right now he's definitely trending toward one of the MVP favorites. And I, I really think that if he can sustain the success, that would put him for sure into the top five. Because I, w- I had him there all through last year, almost until the very end when he fell yeah. apart. So... So that's really all I have to say there. And for the Vikings, just I mean, this team continues to find unbelievable ways to lose games. Last week, Dalvin Cook fumble, lose on the game-winning field goal. This week, miss an, yet another game-winning field goal. The Vikings are cursed. <laughs> they are cursed. It just, I could I, just the pain of being a Vikings fan. <laughs> I just couldn't imagine. The Mayanapolis miracle, as well as. Uh, the, the mystic kick against it was the Eagles, the Bears. I can't even remember now. Well, the one that comes to mind immediately yeah. for me is the Blair Walsh 27, yeah. 27 yarder. Yeah, it's just that they, they cannot find a kicker to kick for anything. And I saw they can't find a way to win ever. <laughs> so, moving on from there, Titans, Seahawks. Titans pulled this one out as I suspected 33 to 30. Uh, Ryan Tannehill, 347 yards, no touchdowns, no interceptions. Derrick Henry. Back to Derrick Henry, 182 yards on 35 carries for three touchdowns. What a monster. Julio Jones looking like Julio Jones, 128 yards. Derrick Henry for 55 yards, also receiving. A.J. Brown, not a great – not a great uh, – dropped, dropped, dropped a lot of that's passes. He dropped a lot of passes, and I think it's only a matter what, of time you before – You tweeted after the game? Well, wait, 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 we'll get to that in a second because um, I'm going to let you talk all about this game. Uh, AJ Brown, I think he's going to step up. But he when he starts making some receptions. He's been tar- I think he's the number one targeted receiver in the NFL right now. He just has so many drops that it's hurting him. But it's AJ Brown. He'll pick it up. Um, and then the Seahawks side of things: Russell Wilson, 330, 343 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. Chris Carson, 31 yards rushing, two touchdowns. Kyle Lockett, 178 yards, one touchdown. DK Metcalf held to 53 yards. I just want to talk a little bit about the Seahawks. Still a really solid team. They're one and one. I think Titans are a better team than Seahawks at this point in the season. If you have Tyler Lockett, trade him now. His trade value is higher than, than anything. Here. He had 178 yards with a touchdown. If you have Tyler Lockett, trade him now. There's no way he sustains that. A, Tyler Lockett gets injured from time to time. B, they have DK Metcalf. And eventually, if Tyler Lockett continues to do good, they're going to rely, rely more heavily on DK Metcalf. Trade Tyler Lockett while he has just such a high trade value right now. Get a lot out of him. That's what I would suggest. Um, going from there, uh, going over to the Titans, wow, that Derrick Henry's Derrick Henry. And as I said, AJ Brown's going to bounce back. I'll let Max take it over. 
where do I even begin with this game? This was just an unbelievable affair. Um, starting on the offense, we we know what they are. Derrick Henry, as as well as as much time as he usually takes to pick it up as the year goes on, I think he's going to have a few more iffy games from here on out because he's usually not himself early on. But man, did he turn it on when he needed to? He had a, really the six yard run he had in the fourth quarter. I think it was a turning point because we, um, we were down 30 to 16 at that point. But then I think that really sw- started to swing momentum in our favor. On defense, one player I'm really, really high on right now is Christian Fulton. I did not expect um, Mike Vrabel and Shane Bone to put him in coverage against DK Metcalf. Not only did he play in coverage, he played well. And it was it was great to see in the second quarter, I believe, they were getting into it. And and DK was one who's getting the penalties for being undisciplined. And that's just something you love to see for a guy that inexperienced to have to get into the head of a guy who is, I mean, DK is not a veteran at this point. It's only his third year, but a guy who's that established, you wouldn't expect that to happen. I mean, even besides that, his, he's so technically sound. I think he has a great future in this league. And I, I'm really sh- shocked to see how well he's playing so early. When it comes down to it, this game was the quintessential Titans game. Go down early in the game. It, it doesn't look that great, but then lead, come back on a game-winning drive in an improbable fashion. I believe this was the I believe this um, was the first time the Seahawks had lost on home field after being up 15. I think maybe I don't know about ever, but it was, I think they were 52 and one now or something like that. As crazy as a game like this is, and we we love to see how the Titans can come back from these. Deficits. You can't keep trying to win games like this because against better teams, you're not going to be able to mount those comebacks. I mean, the Seahawks are still a good team, but sooner or later, that's going to catch up to you. And I definitely think that issues that led to this are fixable. For example, Elijah Molden got burned a lot in coverage. I think he's going to grow with experience. Hopefully that happens this year. But right now, he, he's been getting burned a good bit, especially he got burned twice by Lockett, him and Bradley McDougal, who got released. And on the last touchdown of the game, it was a touchdown to Freddie Swain. Something happened in, in the coverage. It just—it was a complete breakdown. It was—it looked like it was a miscommunication, but he got completely free. And that, that's kind of the stuff that led to our um, um, the, the demise of our defense last year. But I do think they're in the right direction because two areas of the um, of the defense, the pass rush, I mean, it's, they have five sacks in two games. That's not a lot, but keep in mind, this Titans team had 19 last year, 19 total sacks last year. They're up to five through two games. And on top of that, they were eight for 12 on third down defense. One of which was a Chris Carson run. That was a yard short. I don't know how that got messed up, but they gave him a first down for no reason. And another third down was the touchdown to Freddie Swain. I mean, let's get to one thing right getting up 30 points a game and especially playing o- the overall defense the titans played is not going to win games or i mean it's not going to it's not going to win championships but for a team that suffered so much turnover in the offseason they were taking those right steps and i i believe that eventually the results will indicate it so i mean maybe you could definitely say that i'm biased as a fan but just, com- just going off comparisons to last year, it's already looking better. So that's at this point, that's really all I'm going to ask for because we know, contrary to what week one showed us, that offense is going to be elite. And A.J. Brown, like I told you, A.J. Brown tweeted after the game, someone from my family told me I couldn't have caught COVID today if I tried. So he, he clearly knows he had a bad game. He'll be okay. Julio, as old as he is, he's still a game changer. Mm-hmm. This offense is going to be elite, but... This defense, even if they improve, they don't have to be great or even that good. If they're decent or decent or capable, this team could do a lot better than people expect. Hundred percent. So moving on from there, we have the the Cowboys and the Chargers. Cowboys won in twenty seventeen. Cowboys one and one. Chargers one and one. Uh, going through the game, unfortunately, I did not have to catch it. But if you guys remember last week, this is definitely a game you needed to watch, and it really turned out to that. I've heard nothing but fantastic things about this game. Uh, Dak Prescott, two hundred thirty seven yards, one interception. Uh, Pollard with 109 yards and a touchdown. And Ezekiel Elliott, 71 yards and a touchdown. I'm just not a believer in Zeke at this point. <laughs> uh, moving on from there, C.D. Lamb, 81 yards receiving. Uh, this is highly the receiving core right there. There is Amari, but uh, Justin Herbert, one touchdown, two interceptions, 338 yards. Austin Eckler, 54 yards rushing. Um, receiving 108 yards for Keenan Allen. And then Mike Williams steps up for 91 yards and a touchdown. 
this game was a battle of two great games. I think both of them are playoff teams. So I'm going to say this now with how this game turned out. I think Cowboys are going to win the division for the NFC East and Chargers are going to make the playoffs as well. Uh, it's both really good teams. So the battle of good teams here. I've heard nothing but great things about this game. Uh, that's all I can really say about it. Max? I, I didn't really watch that close either because I was so locked in on the Titans. So. Hmm. It seemed fairly so, uneventful, but who, know, who knows, really? I, I've heard I've heard great things about this game, how it was really competitive all the way through. Um, ultimately, I think it, should, it really stands as, as a test that both these teams are really good, and it could have been anybody's game. The Cowboys came out on top. Uh, but, again, I think both are playoff teams. So, saving time, kind of move on. Uh, Chiefs Ravens. Ravens pick up this game 36-35. I would have never believed it if you told me that going into this game. Wow. Um, you know, ultimately, it, Baltimore, I mean, Chiefs really blew it, especially in the fourth quarter, if you ask me. Uh, put up 12 unanswered points for Baltimore. Uh, but going into the stats, Mahomes, 343 yards, three touchdowns, interception. Hilaire with 46 yards rushing. Travis Kelsey with 109 yards for touchdown. Pringle with 63 yards and one touchdown. Um, you know, Tyreek Hill with only 14 yards receiving, which painful for uh, me as a, as a, a Hill owner, rather. Uh, going to the Ravens side of things, Lamar Jackson, 239 yards, one touchdown, two interceptions. Uh, they also had 170 yards, 107 yards on the ground for two touchdowns. Uh, Williams had, 40, had 77 yards rushing for them. Receiving, uh, Rookies Brown, Hollywood stepped up for 113 yards and one touchdown receiving. Andrews had 57 yards receiving. Ultimately, you know, this game was, was a back and forth battle. Uh, the Chiefs really took, I would say, really took the game going into the second, third quarters. Um, you know, they, they took a little bit of a lead. And then ultimately, they blew it in the fourth quarter. I mean, Lamar Jackson turned on what Lamar Jackson could do. You know, this is the first time, I think, in forever since the Ravens did not have home field advantage statistically. They weren't their favorite team out of their home field. And they proved why they should be. The Ravens win at home. That's pretty consistent throughout every single year. The Ravens win at home. They did it here. I don't know what to say other than the Ravens are better than we give them credit for. Their defense is really good. They're, I say, a top five, top ten defense, somewhere in that range in the NFL. Offensively, they can get it done. Lamar Jackson is that special. Stop doubting him. I think it's time we stop, everyone stops doubting him. It's Lamar Jackson. He's an elite quarterback in this league. Um, enough of the doubts. He beat the Chiefs. And that in itself is a feat. They lost twice last year. Uh, they already have one loss in the season for two games. Let's say the Chiefs lose twice this year. The Ravens were one of the teams they lost to. That's a feat in itself. Max? I think a lot of this game comes down to John Harbaugh. And one thing we underestimated early in the – but like in the preseason, really, really after the Ravens went down with all those injuries is John Harbaugh is a great head coach and he's going to put his team in position to win. And, and it's even as simple as trusting your own quarterback. And no, and there's no better example of that than on their final play that they ran before they took kneel downs. It was fourth down. And John Harbaugh literally asked Lamar, do you want to go for it? And we, of course, we can assume that means, oh, you're going for it because you know Lamar is going to want to go for it. But you can bet right there. If the Chiefs get that ball back, no matter where they are on the field, the Ravens are going to lose that game because all they need is a field goal, and they have Harrison Butker, who's one of the best kickers in the game. To put trust in your quarterback when it's warranted, and hats off to the Ravens. I mean, I never would have thought they'd be able to win this, but they did, and I think it was a great team effort, especially on offense, and do, sticking to their strengths, emphasizing the ground game, and yeah, that's, that's really all I have to say there. One thing I want to say before we move on is I think Patrick Queen does not get enough credit that he deserves. He's a really good linebacker you know, since he's came to the Leafs coming out of LSU. He's been really good. Um, though it's Patrick, was Patrick Queen? I forget where Patrick Queen come out of. He come out of LSU? LSU, yeah. Thank you. Jason Away also had a pretty good game. Yes. You know, I, I just don't think that they, don't get, they get enough credit. But that being said, great job by the Ravens. Is, I'll see where they go from here. You know, they could potentially be a playoff team. They could, they could win that wild card. You know, it's not impossible. Okay, after a game like that, that really shakes up the division, you know, that are the Browns going to, going to solidify their, their division or, you know, I still, gonna have, I still think they will. Yeah. I think they do, but can't argue with the Ravens win there. Final game of the week. Not much to talk about here. Lions are a bad team. They're going to be bottom five team in the NFL this year, without a doubt. Jared Goff, who was clearly the not as good quarterback out of the, out of the Rams trade, 246 yards, two touchdowns, one reception also had 46 yards rushing down to Swift. Where are you? 37 yards rushing. Receiving wise, Hawkinson led them with 66 yards and a touchdown. Zeke was also at 60 yards and a touchdown. And then Swift also had 41 yards receiving. Packers, a lot better this week. Aaron Rodgers looking like he normally does. 
uh, 255 yards for touchdowns. Aaron Jones had 67 yards and a touchdown. AJ Dillon, 18 yards rushing. Uh, and then Devontae Adams had 121 yards receiving, as well as Tonyan had 52 yards and a touchdown. Uh, also, Aaron Jones, three touchdowns receiving. Can't ignore that. So Aaron Jones stepping into uh, the role that he typically plays, a little bit more on the receiving side, but he wasn't very active just for, for week one. Week two, we get more to what, he, what he's worth. Uh, A.J. Dillon, uh, it's pretty good backup. Didn't really get overly involved here. Uh, but Aaron Rodgers is looking solid. It's not normally looks. I, I'd say week one was a fluke for the Packers. A lot more to prove. You know, they, they did win this game by 18 points, so solid margin. Wouldn't say they're, they're completely back to what they were last year, but this is step one in getting there. Um, my, week one might have been a fluke. Max? Yeah, there were a lot of people who potentially overreacted the Packers week one loss, including myself. But if this game is any indication, they'll probably be okay. I mean, that that offense, maybe they just had to take a week, get back into the swing of things. But they took over. And it's weird that this game was close in the first half. And I was, I was really starting to get worried there because the Packers' defense in the first half did not look good at all. And losing to Darius Smith definitely hurts them because he wasn't playing and he's going to be out for a while. But... And I really don't have a ton to say because we knew I mean, Aaron, I will say Aaron made a, had a really good game. And there was one throw I remember he made to Robert Tunney and it was, it was a touchdown throw just made to such a tight window. I mean, that, that's, that's the Aaron Rodgers we know and love. So hopefully for their sake, he'll get a play like that and put week one behind him. A hundred percent. And with that being said, that pretty much wraps up our recap of the week. And we're going to get to our favorite segment, or at least Max's favorite segment that I'm doing. The lightning round of picks. So if you guys are ready, welcome to our lightning round of picks for the week. Here we go. Week three, we're going to pick. we got the Panthers, Texans. I think Panthers take this one by a margin. Panthers will be three and out. Max? Yep, Panthers. We, you got to you got to win, especially with Davis Mills starting. That's a, def, that's a definite ground downgrade of quarterback there. Don't play down to a team that you're clearly better than. Yep, Chiefs, Chargers. I'm picking the Chiefs by a pretty solid margin. Chargers still a great team, but Chiefs got it. You're not losing two in a row, especially when that second game's at home. Mm, Cardinals. Uh, versus Jaguars, I'm taking Cardinals. Cardinals move the three and out. Yeah. Uh, Bears, Browns, I'm taking the Browns. Bears, uh, Browns. I can see if the past two games are any indication that could be a little closer, but I especially think with Justin Fields starting, it's going to take a little bit of time. Browns are definitely the better team. I don't think the Bears are going to last. Mm-hmm. Bills, Washington, I'm taking the Bills. Bills. They're, 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 they're making their way back. Uh, Titans, Colts, got to take the Titans here. 100%. We don't win this game this week, especially against if Jacob Eason's one starting. Either whoever's starting a quarterback for mm-hmm. them. It's Division gonna, rival. Is not the, going to be in an ideal spot. Yep, division so rival. Division rival without the starting quarterback, you got to win that game. Uh, Saints, Patriots. I'm taking the Patriots. Saints are kind of up and down in the mess right now. Up, but I definitely think that Saints showed more of their true colors last week on the road at, against Bill Belichick. I think they're going to keep him in check. Yep, Giants, Falcons. By the love of God, Giants win this game. I'm picking the Giants. I'm picking the Falcons. <laughs> no. I really don't believe in the Giants. <laughs> God, if the Giants are going to win a game this season, this is the one they got to win. It's got to be this. It's got to be this one. Uh, Bengals, Steelers. I'm going with the Steelers here. Yeah, I'm going to go Steelers. I still think they're better than the Bengals. Close, close game, but I'm going with Steelers. Ravens, Lions, Ravens, easy, easy choice, especially after last week. They're going to ride that high. Jets, Broncos. I'm taking the Broncos. Broncos move to 3 0. Uh, Dolphins, Raiders. I'm taking the Raiders. Raiders move to 3 0. I thought about picking the Dolphins here because I feel like this is one of those games that the Raiders could lose. They because a lot of their games last year were playing down to better to worse teams, mm-hmm. especially no two for the Dolphins. I think that's the that was really the key for me to pick the Raiders in this one. Mm-hmm. We got my game of the week right here, Buccaneers Rams. Uh, I'm definitely going with the Buccaneers this week. I'm going to go with the Rams. I think Stafford gets it done. I, is, I believe in this team. That's going to be the game of the week right there. Yeah, I just think. The Rams had a close one against the Colts. I think the Buccaneers are a better team. I got to go with the Buccaneers here. Uh, moving on from there, we have the Seahawks, Vikings. I think the Seahawks, Vikings are the best. They will go yeah. three. Yeah. Um, Packers, 49ers. It's going to be a good one. I'm I'm going to ride with the 49ers. You know, the Packers I came back. The 49ers as well. I think that, I like I said, I think they tend to start a little slow, but I think against a really good team in prime time, they're going to show what they can do. It was, it was really 2019 that I'm really comparing the season to because mm-hmm. – there, I remember I picked a lot of games for them where I thought, yeah, the 49ers have been, haven't been playing that well. But any game that was a big game for them, they had to win to prove themselves, they won. I think they're going to do it this game. And then final game of the week, Cowboys-Eagles. You got to pick the uh, Cowboys here, not the Eagles. got to pick the Cowboys. Cowboys. Yep. Cowboys here. So that, uh, that wraps up every game of the week. Thank you guys for participating in our lightning round. Um, if you guys have any comments, questions, leave them down below. Uh, if you guys disagree with us in any of our picks, um, 
with that being said, that pretty much wraps up our podcast for the week. Max, do you have any final words? Not really. All right. Other than that, uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, it was a really fun week. We're going to keep working on making things better and better. I'm really loving the podcast and how it's shaping out so far. Um, you know, I think we're, we, have a lot, we have a lot of energy on this podcast right now. Um, I think our segments are really good. We're not st- staying too long on one team. Um, if you guys have any suggestions, comments, whatever you guys want to see, and maybe an extra segment, maybe pull back a little bit on maybe statistics, whatever it might be, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Other than that, thank you guys for watching. See you guys next week. Yeah. Uh, thank you.